Thank you all for taking the time to gather here to honor a man I was so privileged to call daddy. Make no mistake, I did address him and honored him and respected him in his capacity as Honorable Justice Kapoor. Oftentimes when I would write him a note or an email and the communication was official, to me he was not daddy at that point. He was Justice Kapoor. So this afternoon I'll speak of him in his capacity as Honorable Justice Kenneth Kapoor. Allow me to make a correction concerning his profile. He was married to the late Winnie Inchiza Kakuru and together he had three children, Samantha, myself, Tracy, and Rose. He was married to Mrs. Charity Nakunda Kakuru and together they had three, they have three children, Ruth Joy and Pyre Kakuru and twin sons, Eria Kim, Nate Namara Kakuru, and Joshua Ethan Narinda Kakuru. I'll continue with my eulogy. Justice Kapoor, he loved the law, but was very much aware of the origin of the law. In one of our conversations while I was still a law student, he told me that the entire law concept was specifically crafted to benefit the elite, the wealthy, and suppress the poor to ensure that the two classes were kept divided. Well, he always had his theories and sometimes I frowned upon them because I liked the knowledge and the wisdom. With that in mind, and having a father, my grandfather, the late Reverend Eria Kim Kamjandu, who outrightly spoke against injustice. Justice Kapuru made it his lifetime goal to mostly re represent the underdogs. He could have chosen otherwise. He could have chosen otherwise. Corporate and commercial law, banking, that would have earned him big bucks. But that wasn't the way he desired to practice law. He stood out as a human rights activist, creating jurisprudence in the area of constitutional law, human rights, and environmental law, as we've had this afternoon. So it's no surprise that the law society comprised of his colleagues was instrumental in fronting his name to join the bench. As justice of the Court of Appeal, God gave him the opportunity to decide cases, allowing him to put his good, brilliant mind using the law to promote justice. The past two days, social media has buzzed with testimonies from students he taught and mentored the legal fraternity, those who practiced alongside him in his advocacy days, the clients he represented, and the list goes on. All mentioning who he was and what he stood for. And I'm so glad that this afternoon, it has been reaffirmed. He loved what he did, he loved his work as a justice. During court vacation, he would organize all his pending files and use his vacation to complete all pending cases. Like we have heard, he was a backlog fighter. About two weeks ago, while he was sick and frail in Nairobi, he asked me to help him. There was a pending judgment that he hadn't finished, but he was too frail to do it. So he called me and said, I'm going to dictate to you this judgment. Please type it out for me. That was how much he loved his job, and that was the last judgment he wrote. He took it very serious, very seriously. When he got sick, he was concerned that he wouldn't be able to keep up with the demand of his work, so he submitted his resignation as he had. He later explained to us that after speaking with the Honorable Chief Justice, he was convinced to continue doing his work, that it would be a way of therapy for his mind, so that he could take his mind off his condition. I believe that he did. He left his mark and so much more. He was yet to offer, but here we are. He loved his country and served his country well. I'd like to thank the legal fraternity, the judiciary, friends, relatives, his family, in a special way, his wife, Auntie Charity, for taking good care of him through his sickness. For God and my country. Thank you.